This is a 10 gallon enclosure. And chances are you've got a 10 gallon tank kicking around in your basement from something you had before. And you're thinking, what kind of an animal, what kind of a reptile can I keep in a 10 gallon for its entire life comfortably? Well, today, let's go over the top five animals that you can keep in a 10 gallon tank comfortably. My name's Adam, this is Sarah. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Let's start it off. Number five, axolotls. And if you're thinking, man, you're cheating. That's an amphibian. You're right. And there's gonna be a little bit of cheating in this episode. And, and here's why. Right up front, there's really not a lot that can sit and live in a 10 gallon enclosure like this one for very long before it grows out of it. But axolotls can. They can live their entire life in a 10 gallon enclosure like this bad boy here. And in fact, we keep one in a 10 gallon enclosure. We keep them mostly in a 20 gallon because bigger is always better in my opinion for uh, reptiles and amphibians and basically anything that you're housing, give them more space than needed. But if you have a 10 gallon enclosure, you're gonna put something in it, an axolotl might be a great option. Now the reason that they are so high up on the list and they're not closer to number one is because water parameters are really not easy to take care of. Water parameters actually take quite a bit of work so I wouldn't say these are a beginner species, and most of these aren't gonna be beginner species anyway, but these guys, you really have to figure out how to do water changes, how to make sure the water chemistry is perfect. It's just not gonna work otherwise. But why would you wanna get one? Why are they on the list if they're so terrible? Well, they're not terrible, they're just more difficult to care for in my opinion. And the really cool thing about them is they come in a bunch of different colors. And actually some of them glow in the dark. They've got a gene where they'll glow, well not glow in the dark, but under a blue light or a black light rather. So if you want something that glows under a black light, you've got one of these really cool rooms. I remember when I was a teenager and I had a black light in my room. That would have been really cool to have. I didn't know what axolotls were, you know, 15 years ago, but they, that would have been pretty darn cool. So they have a uniqueness about them. They're really easy to breed if you're into that sort of thing, although I wouldn't recommend it. They don't really go for a lot of money and they produce hundreds at a time. So maybe if you're going for a breeding project, that wouldn't be the one, but they eat like champs. These guys will eat earthworms when they get old enough, which are really cool, as long as you don't mind cutting up earthworms, because usually a full-grown earthworm is too big, so you just gotta cut it up in some pieces. They grab a hold of it. It's really cool to watch. They'll eat brine shrimp when they're younger. So it's really easy and cheap to feed them, and everything that you'd feed them is really easily found at a reptile store, pet store, whatever, or even a bait and tackle shop if you wanted to get, you know, earthworms, night crawlers, that sort of thing. And if you choose to get one in a 10 gallon and you think, man, I wish I had a 20 gallon, you find one of those dollar a gallon sales and you upgrade to a 20 gallon, you can cohab them as long as they're both females because if you get a male and a female, they will breed. And that's why we have more than two axolotls now. We found out that out the hard way, but all in all, if you want something that's aquatic, that is an amphibian because these guys are salamanders, aquatic salamanders from parts of Mexico, although they're nearly extinct in their native range, I really can't think of a better option if you want to put in the work for water quality than an axolotl. They're fun to watch. I really like these guys. Number four, and an actual reptile. How about that? Morning geckos. And everyone wants me to do a video about morning geckos. I think they're really cool. It's just that to keep them, eh, the reason a lot of people keep them, to be honest, is because they're feeder items for other animals that don't eat rodents. So that's the reason why a lot of people keep them. And what's really cool about them is although they can live in a 10 gallon enclosure by themselves, and you could feasibly put two or three of them together in an enclosure because they can cohab, parthenogenesis is a thing. And I'll put the description here because I'm too dumb to explain it properly, probably. Basically, um, they are females and don't need males to reproduce. So you will get more babies if you have more than one in an enclosure. And once you have a whole bunch, it, 10 gallon enclosure is useless. You can't have 20 morning geckos in an enclosure that's 10 gallons. And you'd want it to be vertical like that. And there is a bunch of different ways that you can convert them into being like just a regular tank, a 10 gallon tank into being an upright tank, right? An up, upright enclosure. Or you can just buy an exoterra one. And they make them 12 by 12 by 18. It's the equivalent of a 10 gallon enclosure. And that's probably your best bet with these guys. Now, 
they eat a prepared diet, just like a crested gecko or a gargoyle gecko would, which is very cool. And although crested geckos won't make the list because they can't live in 10 gallons, it's the, the care is very similar. And the heat and humidity requirements aren't difficult at all with the morning gecko. They're fun to watch, especially if you've got, you know, more than two of them and you know what to do with the babies when they're gone. And even if they're in a 10 gallon enclosure, they zip around, they're not great for handling but they're really fun to watch. And you can make nice planted enclosures, like these bioactive enclosures, like you'll see one here that I made for baby Cresta geckos. You can make the same sort of thing for your morning geckos, which is really cool because the most realistic enclosures, in my opinion, are the most beautiful ones. And if you've got an animal in there that moves around a lot, that isn't boring, like, some of our next entries, to be honest, then it just, it's more fun. And, and then what do you want an animal for in the first place? For it to be fun to look at and fun to watch. So there you go, morning geckos. Number three, and one again that's in my personal collection and not a reptile, green tree frogs. American green tree frogs or American gray tree frogs, whatever. These guys are fantastic. They're so small, they don't get very big. I think males get up to like four inches, something like that. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong here. And they can live together, you can keep them in pairs, and they won't breed actually unless you give them the right space to breed. You're gonna need, it's a whole complicated explanation, but if you just keep them in an enclosure like this, where you have water on the bottom with some sort of drainage layer, we use gravel and a land area, and then just a little pump in this, basically what's a 10 gallon enclosure, what I explained earlier, those exoterras that are super small, then they, they won't breed. So you can actually have a male and a female. The males will chirp at you, which is hilarious. There's a couple videos from a while back where I'm just talking and then all of a sudden someone thought it was a dog barking. They are pretty loud, but it's not common. And if you kept them a couple rooms over, you wouldn't be able to hear it. So overall, it is a cheap setup and they actually can live in an enclosure that is 10 gallons their whole life. So it just depends, right? Because if you wanted to do a multi-species enclosure, which a lot of people do with tree frogs and they keep them with grass tail lizards or green anoles or whatever, else right house geckos you can do that but you don't want to do that in a 10 gallon you want a bigger enclosure if you're just keeping green tree frogs because you like green tree frogs 10 gallon enclosures are actually perfect for that and the diet is easy too and they're fun to watch eat because they will hop all over the place and they're sometimes not super scared of you which i really like because an animal that's not scared will come up to you and they'll be, you'll be able to watch them without them trying to hide away from you and you can of course do planted enclosures with these guys as well. It might be a little bit difficult when you need a water area, right? And a 10 gallon, but in general, these guys are really easy to feed. You feed them mealworms, crickets, things like that. They're insects, insectivores. So I think that because the care is so easy and they actually can live in a 10 gallon their entire life, even when they're adults and you can keep them in pairs in a 10 gallon, these guys are pretty great on the list, even though it's a reptile list and they're amphibians. Well, the next one's a a little bit of a cheat or two and let's just move right on to it number two pac-man frogs you guys knew they had to be on the list even if you weren't expecting amphibians you'd be surprised if this one wasn't on the list and like green tree frogs before them the temperature and humidity is really easy we're talking about darn near room temperatures for these guys and a 10 gallon is something they can live in their entire life this has been casting a shadow the entire time so and I don't need it for anything. But if I were to use it for something, I bet you it would be a Pac-Man frog because they're great. The thing is, they are boring. <laughs> In my opinion, personally, I think they're boring just because a Pac-Man frog does one thing. It eats. That's it. It sits there and eats. It barely ever moves. You could leave it for a week. It would come back and it'd be in the exact same place. If you have food, then it will go jump into action. But otherwise, Unless it's going to breed with something or eat something, it's not really doing too much. But they are fun to watch eat, I will tell you. Pac-Man frogs, just look it up on the internet if you ever think about getting one. They're fun to watch eat, 100%. These guys, they'll jump, their mouths are basically, the reason they're called Pac-Man frogs, like I'm trying to jumping all over the place, is because their mouths open like, it looks like a Pac-Man. Like they're basically opens, it almost looks like their body disappears because their mouth is so big. So they can eat things like small mice. This is not a great staple for them. Insectivores is what they are, again. But they will eat basically anything that fits in their mouth. They will fit anything in their mouth that possibly they can and they will eat it. Although I wouldn't recommend just going and finding things that fit in their mouth to feed them. But in general, again, if I have to say in general one more time, you guys are gonna turn this off. They're fantastic if you don't mind inactivity and you can come and get them in, you know, a bunch of different colors and flavors, not flavors, don't eat your Pac-Man frog. But if you want a green one, if you want an albino one, if you want one that looks like a strawberry because they're called strawberry morphs, well, Pac-Man frogs are pretty cool. Now, number one, obviously can't do a list without it. You guys knew it was coming. 
not leopard geckos. Leopard geckos need a 20 gallon enclosure. Don't be a silly Sally. We're talking about webfoot geckos or Nambian sand geckos, a lot of people call them. And they're not the same thing as fanfoot geckos, by the way. So a web gecko, a webfoot gecko rather, these guys, they'll come from deserts like the Nambian desert and they're really small, like really small. And the really interesting thing is that males can cohab with other males and they don't want to kill each other. If you did that with a gecko like this, a leopard gecko, you'd be getting one off the side of the tank with a hose the next day. They would rip each other to shreds and you'd have one leopard gecko and you end to bed with two. With Nambian sand geckos or webfoot geckos, you don't have this issue at all. These guys can cohab very well and you could keep two or three of them in a 10 gallon enclosure. Now, I personally would never do this. I would always have a 20 gallon or even larger maybe because I think that it's just the more floor space, the better. Just if you have the room, 20 gallon isn't that much bigger than a 10 gallon, just do it. But if all you have is a 10 gallon and you are dead set, you're gonna put something in there. These guys are really easy to keep. A little bit of a higher temperature than some of the other things on the list, right? Especially axolotls where you need literally like 68%, 68 degrees rather, is perfect for them. These guys are gonna be a little bit hotter, obviously. They are an actual reptile. And of course they, well, they live on sand. This is really cool because the police of loose substrate, loose substrate police, they, they can't really say much. They're gonna give you a hard time about anything else. But with these guys, if someone tells you that they can't be on sand, well, you're a silly goose. They are sand geckos. That's what they do. They are on sand. And a lot of people say you play sand and that is it. And of course, these guys are fast. They're small. Most small animals are fast and they will scurry around and they're not really great for handling, but they look amazing. They are absolutely so cool. If I could find them, I would have them. This is one of the very few things left that I don't already have that I would love to have. It's just that they're really hard to find. They're not easy to find at all. But if you can find them and that's what you want for your 10 gallon, that's really awesome. They're really easy. I mean, at the end of the day, you get sand, you get a couple of hides, you get a water bowl, although they likely will never use it because they get almost all their moisture from water droplets from morning dew, which is you spraying the enclosure just once a day, not a lot to bring the humidity up because they want a low humidity and from insects, which is what they eat. So really, you could get away with setting this thing up. If you already had an enclosure, 10 gallon enclosure, you could set it up for like 20 bucks. Get a bag of play sand, it's five bucks. Get a couple of hides, which could be free if you go find something you already have or go to the dollar store, get a water bowl, which could be a clay pot. Now, we're so we're into it like eight bucks to set this up. And then of course, get your light, which a lot of people have extra lights too. So really cheap to set up, really cheap to, to take care of in the long term. And they're really rewarding in my opinion. And they breed pretty easy as well. And you can keep more than one male in a breeding group, of course. It just depends, like, do you have anyone in your area that wants them? I imagine the reason that they're hard to find is because no one really wants them, but I guess I'm nobody. So there you go. Top five animals that can actually live in a 10 gallon enclosure. What do you think? Would you like to see me do this with 20 gallons and 40 gallons and 120 gallons? If you want it, I'll make them. Let me know in the comments section below. And this idea actually came from a Patreon supporter. So you guys are freaking awesome. For as little as a dollar a month, you can see these videos early, extra stuff. There's some extra stuff we talked about in the stream, which you can watch right here. Last week that is coming to Patreon members, discounts on the merch, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I've plugged everything now. Hit subscribe, see you on Monday.